In today's video, I want to talk about seven year-end procedures that any company must do. Good day. My name is Heinrich Hubier. I'm the owner of SA Accounting Network and I've been in the accounting industry since 2008. I think one of the hot topics that a lot of small businesses normally battle with is just year-end procedures and that's the reason why I just want to just briefly discuss what it is that you guys need to do on your side to make sure that your books, books are in order for your year-end. Um, yeah, so let me maybe jump straight into this. Remember once again just to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel as well and then uh, let me jump down to my computer then we're going to jump straight into the seven procedures that you guys need to do for your small businesses. Um, for today's video, I'm just going to be working on Sage. As you guys know, most of my, my videos are on Sage at the moment. So just the first thing that's really, really important is the first thing that you need to must do, any business must do, is a bank reconciliation. Remember, in any accounting package, your, your bank account is basically the backbone of your accounting system. So if your bank doesn't balance, then it means that 90% of your data is going to be inaccurate. So I can't emphasize how important this is that you guys must do a bank reconciliation if your bank is out then the chances are that all your other reports are going to be out as well let me quickly show you yeah so if you're going to sage <clears throat> so the easiest way to do it they've got a, obviously a couple of things that you can do over there where you can do a bank reconciliation over there the one that i prefer to use if you go to reports and you go to that one that says bank and credit card transactions what you will do is you obviously choose your month <clears throat> if it's the year end you're obviously going to be choosing february we're just going to just do january for now as I don't think there's any transactions in February yet. I'm just working on the demo company for now. But so what will happen is if you look at this transaction report, you can see there's not a lot of transactions inside this. It's obviously just the demo company, but you can see that your closing bank balance over there is 3 million and 88,000 Rand. So you must go make double sure that that same amount reflects on your bank statement as well. Because you're like, once again, as I say, if your bank is out, then you're going to have problems. I've done a separate video on bank reconciliations. If you're not sure, go have a look at that one. Otherwise, ask your accountant if you can assist you with the bank reconciliation. The second really important thing is to do a debtors review. So what you're going to do, let me quickly show you once again on Sage. Is if you're going to Sage, if you go to customers, there's a report over there that says reports and that one that says customer balances days outstanding. So you need to have a look at this report over here just to make sure that your debtors are in order. So you can see at the moment, if I look at this one over here, it's showing that we've got 32 million rands worth of data. So you need to go through this list and make sure that all these invoices are valid invoices, that these guys must be here. If maybe, let's say, for instance, you've got balances with negative amounts and stuff like that, then you need to investigate and find out what the reason is. Because if your data are out, remember your data are directly linked to your sales amount. And when your sales is obviously really, really important for your income statement. And the other thing that it also affects is obviously the VAT. So I think you must always make sure every month then, but especially at the end, you must make sure that you've got your debtors right. Um, I've done a separate video once again where I talked about customers and invoicing and how that whole process works. So go have a look at that video if you're not sure what to do in terms of your debtors. The next really, really important thing is once again, similar to debtors is your creditors. Remember, your creditors, all the people that you buy on account from your suppliers and stuff like that. So if your, your credit is incorrect, then it means that your expenses and probably your cost of sales isn't going to be correct. So let me quickly show you. So if you once again back in Sage, you would go to your suppliers over there, you can go to reports and you go to this one, there's a supply balance, it stays outstanding, run this report over here, and then you need to confirm that the amounts that's on this credit, this report, that you actually owe these suppliers these amounts. So the first step that you would have to do when you do creditors reconciliations, you need to contact all these suppliers and ask them for statements so they can go confirm that these closing balances are correct as you that is reflecting on Sage. Once again, I've done a separate video on this again where I talked about suppliers and supply invoices. If you're not sure, go look at that video over there and then you can go through that in detail. And the next one uh, stock valuations because remember if your stock is wrong then that means your cost of sales is going to be incorrect and also the value in the balance sheet which we're going to talk about just now is also going to be out so once again if i jump back into sage <clears throat> so if i go to sage over here and i go to items and there's a report over there that says report and i go to item valuation and i click on that one and bring me to this screen so over here on this item valuation report it will give you a list of all the items that you've got in stock and obviously what the value is you can see in this business 
this is 8.82 million rand or 8.8 .8 million rand. So what you would need to do is you would need to go do a stock take in your business, confirm that these are the quantities you've got in hand, and you can always go check your supply invoices to make sure that the prices are right. But once again, like I said, if you did your supply recon, then the chances are that your prices are going to be correct. So, um, so you need to go do a stock take and make sure that these amounts of here are really um, the amount that is the value of your items. If you don't work with items um, on Sage, remember then you still need to do a stock take so you can see what the closing balance is of your stock, then you can have to pass it here in journals for that. And it's normally wise to ask your accountant to assist you with that. I think the next important thing is to, if you know your bank balances, you've got your creditors balancing, your debtors balancing, is the next step is to have a look at your balance sheet. <clears throat> so the, what you would normally do, if I go back into Sage, um, the best thing would be to go run a balance sheet for the end of the previous financial year. So let's say, for instance, we're going to be looking, I just want to go back maybe to January last year, and I look at that report, and I open up a second tab, and I just do a balance sheet for the end of January this year. <clears throat> what you would normally then do is you compare the two balance sheets with each other, just to see what moved inside that balance sheet. So you can see here's a list of stuff that they've got. You can see they've got equipment, motor vehicles, there was a bank account, debtors, that payable. So what you would do is you look at your balance sheet as, as the end of the previous month, then you go through these accounts. So if you look at your equipment account and you see something changed over there, then you need to go and investigate why there's changes on your balance sheet inside that specific account. So if it did happen that you guys did buy assets during the year, then it's fine, then it must be there. Because what we sometimes find, especially with, with equipment and motor vehicles, is that people, when they do their processing, they tend to put the car payments inside that motor vehicle account and then it messes everything up. So remember car payments and stuff like that, put it through as an expense. At the end of the year, your accountant will assist you to split those payments up into which portion must be capital and which portion must be, be, must be interest. <clears throat> yeah, so that's the next thing. So look at your assets. We look at your motor vehicles, obviously we looked at the bank accounts and we did confirm that those amounts are right. If you've got a petty cash amount, you can go double check that that amount is right. You would look at your debtors, which we've done already. And you, obviously if you've got inventory, you can have a stock failure over here. And um, yeah, so just come compare the two balance sheets with, with each other, just to make sure that there's no hohos waiting for you over there. Um, once you know that your two balance sheets are correct, the next year procedure that you need to do after that is to go look at your income statement. So what you would do is if you go back to Sage, you would go to accountants area over there, go to reports, management reports, profit and loss. And then normally what we pre pre prefer to do is you look at the yearly one or maybe your year to date report. And then after that, you say that you want to look at it on a monthly basis because what this will do they call this analytical review so on this report of here you'll see that if something is not posted into the correct account then it will obviously jump out to you so you can see there's a princess we go through the expenses you can see your advertising cost there was nothing and all of a sudden there's two months where there's like 400 pounds rent in there so then you can go ask yourself the question are those expenses in the right place was it maybe for something else was it maybe an asset that you bought so, so the, that's the reason why I go through income statement to make sure that all these places are in the right place. Because obviously if your income statement is wrong, then your profit for the year is going to be wrong and all your tax and all this stuff is going to be wrong as well. I think that is obviously the next important thing. So I think those are the main things. And just one more thing that I just want to add on to the list, which is the seventh thing is to always go have a look at your asset register at the end. A lot of people forget about that thing, but it's quite often one of the first things if you apply for finance or the receiver of revenue does a verification or something, they're going to ask you for that asset register. So go look at your books, look at your asset register, update those things. If you've maybe sold anything during the year, let your accountant know so you can pass the journals over there because it might end up that there might be a profit on the sale of a fixed asset. Um, if you guys like the video, once again, just give it a like and subscribe to my channel as well. And then keep your eyes out for the next one. And good luck with the year ends.